was prophesied Oh, son of man Oh, speak to the wind So I prophesied As he commanded me This is what I did say Come, breath of Yah Shalom, shalom, and welcome, you guys. Welcome to today's class. Let me just close that out. I'm ima I'd imagine we're still going to have more coming in, so I've got to be mindful of those at the same time. Here we go.
All right, welcome everyone to today's class. Um, we're going to continue with, you know, some vocabulary words. We're going to hear a little bit of, from um, one of my mentors and, and um, really one of the reasons why I started doing codes was because of a man named Yaakov Ramsel. We're going to hear from him and his testimony about some uh, Yeshua codes, which is the very place that I started when I started searching codes. Um, the very first things were some of the codes that he had talked about on the program that we're going to look here. And then so after that, we're going to reconstruct some of those um, anomalies. And in particular, one, which is in Isaiah 53, I think you guys will be blessed. And, and you'll also get a chance to see the function of uh, Taurus off, at least. Um, still some people coming in. Again, welcome everybody. Uh, it's a lot to manage. I got to be mindful of those that are coming in and let them in because I have to admit them. So, um, you know, there's a there's a reason why you have the notebook. If you've been taking notes and you've been writing down all your vocabulary words, it's because these these words are going to come in handy later. Um, you can always review them if you see something in the text. Uh, you can always reference that, right? But you, you also have access to do it in Hebrew and also Google Translate and any other translator that you may want to choose to use, right? So it will come in handy at some point, okay? And um, again, you're going to see these words and phrases over and over again. All right. Before we get started, let me pray, you guys, and then I'm going to give you your... your um, vocabulary and then we'll move right into our um lesson with uh Yaakov Ramsel. Uh and by the way Yaakov just some back history on him. He was a he was a elderly man when he came to know Yeshua and um he searched codes because he was fluent he could read it in the text. He searched codes by hand. He didn't use a computer Computers were a little bit, a matter of fact, the, the internet really wasn't around when, when these videos came out that I saw with uh, Sid Roth um, many years ago, you guys, before, way before I did this. I was uh, up late at night and usually it would be on um, local television very late at night, like one o'clock in the morning or something. Sid Roth would come on and I happened to catch him a few times where uh, he's got this this Jewish fellow on there. Right. And he's talking about these Bible codes. First time I ever hear about it. And um, that's where I got interested. I I remember watching those those broadcasts and thinking to myself, I wish I could do that one day. I could actually look at <laughs> the text and find these codes. Um, I had no idea. And, and at the time, I, I there was no YouTube or anything like that. No code search or anything. But I had this, this desire in my heart. And the more that I saw those kinds of things, the more I got interested. And then you, you guys heard my testimony um, where I talked about my stepfather gave me um, Michael Drosden's books. And, uh, you know, I read those and that kind of drew me in a little more. I was a little perplexed by his his conclusions in it. I didn't agree with his conclusions, but I did agree that this was something miraculous about it. And um, there, there had to be a purpose for it. And so. I, I built on that and grew on that. And then um, somewhere in the, I think the mid nineties, these code programs started popping up where you could get them. And I just so happened to be using a computer at that time because I wasn't a technical person. I wasn't working on computers. Um, the internet was very new. I don't think there was even a YouTube that we were using um, chat apps like pal talk um, to communicate with people. Or, and I remember another one called Tiny Chat. It's sort of like this, where we would meet in small groups and we would share information, right? And you can meet people from all around the world. And I kind of started there. And, you know, when I got a code program and started playing with it, it was really like a hobby, curiosity thing. And, and in, in these groups, I would mention to people, hey, I'm working on this Bible code and it's pretty interesting. You guys want to see it? <laughs> and I would show people these codes. Well, most of them were from Yaakov Ramsel, you guys. Um, I, I, I searched exclusively, you know, Yeshua codes, but then I'm 
progressed into things like the two witnesses and the seven thunders and, you know, things that I, I would see uh, all through the scriptures, the end of days, um, all those kind of things, prophetic ones. And I, I would build on that. And I said, we still got people coming in. Welcome, everybody. You didn't miss anything. Everything is recorded. So, um, so in today's class, I want to take you like on a little journey with, with me back in time to when I was first exposed to Yaakov Ramsel. And, and you know, we've, we've even, uh, because he was a pioneer, again, you guys are the rabbis that were doing this with computer programs in the 70s weren't looking at Yeshua codes or anything like that. Yaakov was a unique anomaly. The fact that he was born uh, Orthodox Jew and then he converted into belief in Yeshua and then he started looking by hand like Isaac Newton in the text because he could he could read the text. He could go to Isaiah 53 and look in the text, right? And, and we're going to look at that code that he found, one of the most famous. And, you know, that's when he started, you know, in this pursuit this this hunger that he had for truth he found yeshua and so he's very famous for all the yeshua codes that, that you're going to see in the, in the video that i'm going to show you and then we're going to reproduce some some of those maybe one or two um depending on how long it goes i don't want to keep you guys too long and overwhelm you but i do want you to be able to see um how t at least taurus off works and how you know the method is to to search a code okay so um let me start by praying. I'll be whole. We're so thankful, Father, for this day that you've given us to gather in your mighty name, Abba. And then we, we just ask that you would uh, dwell with us in this day, in this um, uh, teaching here, Father, that you would keep us protected, that you would send angels to guard us and protect us, that you would reveal yourself in a mighty way in your word, Father, and um open the hearts and the minds of these students that they can see that these concepts of searching codes and searching the deep things of you, Father, is of you. We give you all the glory and the praise, Father. We pray this in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. All right, you guys. If you're ready, let's get just get through these um, very simple. It's not complicated, these, these vocabulary words. And then we're going to move right into Yaakov Ramsel and some Yeshua codes. And um, I think it's going to bless you. So welcome, everybody. Your very first word. Let me bring up the Google Translator. And again, you can use uh, do it in Hebrew. Google Translator is kind of generic. It's, you know, the longer the phrases are that you're trying to search or translate, you know, sometimes there are not exactly um, accuracy there. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Very first word that we're going to look at is derak. Derak, which is a dalad. Resh. Now, calf is a journey or a way or a road, right? So this. This journey that you're on is a derak, all right? That's your Hebrew word. And these are the keys, the dalad, the resh, and this right here, the, the kaf. Very next word is kohen. Kohen means priest. And it's spelled like this, but this key here. The kaf he, he nun is Cohen. And this means priest. And that is a noon on the end there. Your very next word is mean or mime, which means water. Water. Really interesting. That you can put a shin on on the front of that, Shemaim, and you got Scott. But going back to mine, which is your vocabulary word, um, 
You can see the sky is made of water there with the root. Hebrew is so fun. By the way, we got water coming down right now as I'm talking about mine. The sky is just opened up. <laughs> it is pouring down water. So if you hear the noise, it's the rain. I'm sitting outside. All right, your next word, and that's mem, yod, mem. Mem, open mem, yod, close mem, water. And if we wanted to make it sky, we just add a shim. See how the, we could actually, we could probably make that your, your other vocabulary word there, which is not in my list, but we can add that. So you can see how the, the, the re relation and the closeness of these um, root words. Very next word is melak, which is king. Melak. Mem, lamen. Oof. Melak is king. That's mem, lamed, poof. King. Next one is nefesh. Nefesh is noon, pe, shin, which means soul. Soul, nefesh. Very next word is sofer or sefer, which is a, a samic, pe, resh. It means book, sefer. Samic pay resh. The next vocabulary word is ein. Ein means I. And it's spelled ein, yod, nun, I. Ein. Which is where, I mean, if you look in a dictionary, you look for, for the word I, it probably says from the Hebrew, right? Because that's, you can see the root there, right? Ein, I. Very next word is Zaba. Zaba. Oop, wait a minute. Zadi, Bet, Aleph means army. Host, army, um, service. Like one of our one of our vocabulary words is Yahweh or Yahuwah or Yahovah Zabaot. Have you ever heard that word Zabaot? In the English, is Lord of Hosts. Zaba means army or host, which is a Zadi Bet Aleph. Right, army, and that very the, the next he uh, vocabulary word I have for you is in the English Lord of Hosts, Yod Hey Vav Hey Zaba Ot, which is a Vav Tav Yehuba Zaba Ot is Lord of Hosts. Yehovah of hosts, Yehovah of the army, right? They're going to see that over and over again in, in your in your Hebrew uh, text. And you'll be like, what? What is this word here? It's actually a proper name of the father. When he is in war mode, right? And if, and if you know anything about the Hebrew names of the father, there are many ones of that. There's like 72 of them. And they all are characteristics of the father. When the father is warring, like with Moses and Caleb, his name is Yehovah Zabaot. There's another name that he used, which is Yehovah Nisi. This is where Moses makes a banner. And he said, he is my banner. Yehovah is my banner. Yehovah Nisi. But this one is Yehovah Zabaot, coming from the root word Zaba, which means army. Everybody got that. This is one of the bigger... You, um, vocabulary words that you're going to see. Okay. It's almost like a phrase. All right. Yehovah Zavaot. Very next one. 
And we, and we only got two more left. Rosh. Rosh is a resh. All of shun. It means head. Like Rosh Hashanah means head of the year. And by the way, it's not in the seventh month. <laughs> it's in the month of Nisan. The Jews have got that kind of backwards there with the way they changed that. But Rosh means head. Resh, all of Sheen. <clears throat> you got Rosh Kodesh, which is head of the month. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is head of the year. That would be at the equinox, at the time of the Abib. Rosh, head. All right. And your last is Shana, which means year. Shana is Shin Nun Aleph, which is year. Can also mean she, it can also mean sleep or rest. Okay, especially when we're talking about shemitahs and jubilees and stuff. Uh, Shana means year. All right, that's your last vocabulary word for today. Let's get into. Where it all began with me, guys, is with uh, Yaakov Ramsel. He passed away many years ago. He never got to see uh, the fruit of what he, you know, the seeds that he planted. But uh, many people have have seen those seeds or, or, or grabbed a hold of those seeds and it planted something in them. And uh, they got, had an interest in Bible code. So I want to share that with you. Um, he's going to share a few codes that we're, we're going to take a look at. Um, what's really remarkable is because he didn't use the, the computer to search um, all these codes. He would get a word. Remember how in, in the last class we talked about um, the ephod and, um, you know, and, and then another class we talked about how the, the Bible confirms itself and you can use the codes to, you know, confirm a matter. Uh, the same thing applies with like Yeshua codes, Right. So Yeshua said, the whole of the word testifies unto me. So we should be able to see that in, you know, all of the texts, especially the ones that are, you know, prophetic about the Messianic age, um, the coming of the Messiah, the first and the second coming of the Messiah, right? That should ring true all the way through, right? If we're going to test this thing. So when I had access to a Bible code, this, this is the the where I had I'd actually gone down that road and looking at, at these very same codes. Um, when I first started out, I didn't know much about Hebrew. I didn't know about much about the code program. And so I didn't have an advantage that you do here today, you guys. And, and that is uh, you got somebody who's got a little bit of tenure and, and I don't claim to be perfect and know everything, but I know enough to teach you guys. And I believe it's a steps tool or, um, uh, you know, like an advantage that I didn't have. I wish there was someone there that would have, would have taught me how to search codes, but I had to figure it out on my own, watching rabbis and watching and reading, uh, by the way, a lot of books on, on the concept. And so by the time I got a code program, um, I knew, understood the concept and what, what was, you know, um, particularly possible. And so I just dove right in. But this this is the very first place, really, that I got my first introduction. And that is Yaakov Remzel. All right. So let me share that with you guys here. And we're going to look at one of his codes there, or maybe two. And are challenging the greatest skeptics. Find out these amazing hidden messages. Deuteronomy 6.4. On this edition of It's Supernatural. If it's not natural, consider it's supernatural. The code has been broken. There is no excuse for anyone to doubt that the Torah, the scriptures, the entire Bible comes from a divine authority. And the man that broke the code, a Jewish man that has spent 55 years studying the Bible, I have with me right now, Yaakov Ramsel. Yaakov, how did you break this code? 
said I didn't break it. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, revealed his word unto me, showing me the name of Yeshua the Messiah from Genesis 1 down through the final book of the Tanakh, of the originally called the Old Testament. As you go from page to page, from chapter to chapter, from book to book, the name of Yeshua shows up, that he is the Messiah, that he was the promised one that would come to redeem not only Israel, but the world from all their sins. Now, you, you say to me that in a hidden form, the Hebrew name Yeshua, which is Hebrew for Jesus, is revealed in from Genesis, the, the Breshis, the first book of the Breshi. Bible, all the way through. Yes, yes. Let me, let, let me ask you a question. There is, um, in, uh, the, in the Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures, there is a uh, passage called, from the Jewish prophet Isaiah, written 800 years before Jesus came to earth. It's the 53rd chapter. Personally, I've read this from my Orthodox Jewish father, and he, un, even though he didn't want to believe that it was Jesus, he said, that is describing that man. It's describing Jesus. Now, uh, and anyone that would read it objectively would say it's describing Jesus. It was written 800 years before we can prove this, 800 years before Jesus came to earth. But I have talked to Orthodox rabbis, and they have said, well, it's not really talking about Jesus. It's talking about the nation Israel. It's talking about the Jewish people. To be quite candid with you, Yaakov, this has been an insult to my intelligence. Yes. However, however, Everyone is entitled to their opinion. But you have found a code which through an ancient Jewish method. And, and, and the method, uh, you may be familiar with it, is called g Gematra. And Gematra is where they study the numerical value of every Hebrew word. But you went in a little different approach than, than this ancient uh, traditional Jewish way. How did you break the code? Well, the, the Lord revealed to me that what the Hebrew word shalav means equidistance or equally spaced, equally spaced, like two items, one item from another, or three items, like three rungs on a ladder. Well, this is true with that. It is also true in his word. The word of God from the book of Genesis, Bereshit, all the way to the final last letter in the book, is equally distributed by the Holy Spirit. And so if one understands how this works, then you can see what God is saying behind the scenes. So in Isaiah 53, which we have been taught that this represents Israel, I always had a problem with this because how could a nation that would be destroyed, completely destroyed, alleviate the sins of all the other nations? This could not be. This could not be, for Israel has been persecuted for over 3,500 years. It has never alleviated sin, has never washed away sin. So it must be speaking of a man. And where it says in Isaiah 53, 5, it says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The beatings and the stripes of Israel never healed me. It never healed anybody. As a matter of fact, it wounded them. Yeah, but, but, but I'm interested in this numerical pattern. Okay. Explain that to but me. But then you come right down to verse 10, and you come to where it says, He shall prolong his days. The Hebrew word for this is yurik, which means he shall prolong. Starting with his second yod in that word. Which the second is the, Hebrew letter, which is a yod. Which is the yod. Okay. That is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And you come... I just want to go there, you guys, so you can see his perspective when he's actually searching this. He's reading in the Hebrew, okay, and he's counting letters, which takes a tremendous amount of time, okay? Can you imagine what we can do in fractions of a second? This took him a long time to do, and this is why his codes are always very condensed. You'll see they're, they're usually in chapter and verses, right, which are, are remarkable, and um, those kind of codes that you find are always the ones that you want to search, the smaller skip ones, okay? So he finds here at a very small skip um, these series of letters that are highlighted. We're going to look at that in just a moment after he finishes his presentation here. To where it says, he shall prolong his days. The Hebrew word for this is yurik, which means he shall prolong. 
starting with his second yod in that word. The which second is the, Hebrew letter, which is a yod. Which is the yod. Okay. That is the tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The second yod in that word, counting every 20 letters from left to right. So every... I want you guys to remember the number 20, okay? Every 20th letter that's equally spaced, every 20th letter makes a statement from the first party. It says, Yeshua Shmi, which means Jesus is my name. So now we have the name... Wait, 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 wait. you're going too fast. It's, you're telling me every, how many letters? Every 20th letter. Let me see if I understand this right. Yaakov, you, f you start with one letter in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, a Hebrew letter in the Hebrew scriptures, and you, go, you count how many letters now? Okay, you guys. So just like I said in, in, in previous broadcasts when, when, when I did personal codes for myself, and I heard the Holy Spirit, so go, go here and go there. Remember how we talked about that? Yaakov had the same experience, right? Where he heard the Holy Spirit say, go here to a specific yod and count okay so you will encounter the very same things in your searches all right 20 from that yod you count 20 letters all right you count 20 letters and then you write the next uh the next, next letter. letter and then you count another 20 letters yes, and write the next and it forms a, a, a hebrew sentence and what is the hebrew sentence it forms in hebrew it would be yeshua shmi and Yeshua Shmi in English means? Jesus is my name. Jesus is my name? Yes, so we have the name of the Messiah. The How could anyone say it's Israel if it says in Hebrew, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, okay. Jesus? And the reason why this is significant, especially with Yeshua codes, because Yeshua said the whole of the word testifies unto me. So all of these prophecies about a Messiah, right? should have the fingerprint of Yeshua, correct? All right? So what he did was he tested that. He went and looked, okay? As he said, the rabbis speculate, and I've said this before, that they, they say that Isaiah 53, and by the way, they do not like talking about it, represents the nation of Israel. But Yaakov could not settle for that, right? It didn't make any sense to him. And so he w d dug further, and this is what the Holy Spirit revealed to him. It actually bears the name, right? So it tells us the, 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 okay, so the Bible is interpreting itself. It's telling us the answer in the encoded form. Does everybody follow? Is my name. Do you realize how revolutionary this yes, is? Yes, I do. How could any rabbi anywhere not believe that Jesus <laughs> is the Messiah? This was written 800 years before he came right. to earth. That proves that the inerrant word of God is from God. But wait a second. The ancient rabbis had this system. Why didn't they see it? Well, there is a scripture in Romans, the new the new covenant, that says that Israel's eyes would be blinded in part until the end. But now what is happening? The eyes of many, many non-believing Jewish people, our people, are being opened right now by the Holy Spirit. You see, before they were blinded, they did not see these things. They could not see them. If some did by accident find the name of Yeshua the Messiah, they, they were too ashamed or they were afraid to tell people because of persecution from their own people. From our own people would persecute our own people. This was wrong. But now is the time of restitution of all things. The time of restitution is now, and God is revealing his word, not only to the, the Gentile nations, the non-Jewish people, but to Israel itself, to his, his chosen people, which is Israel. Well, the thing that is so overwhelming to me is that there are 300 precise predictions in the Jewish prophecies, in the Jewish scriptures, 300, and every one, proves that Yeshua, that's Hebrew for Jesus, is the Jewish. Did you under, did you hear what he just said? There are more than 300 messianic prophecies speaking about a man, and Yeshua fulfills every single one of them in the encoded text. Messiah. But not only do they now prove it, but based on these hidden messages, they, every one of them, says the Hebrew name of Jesus, Yeshua. I mean, give me a break. How much proof do you need? We have to take a break right now. Speaking of breaks, be right back after this. 
agnostic says is, I honestly don't know if there's a God. But if you just pay attention to what is being said right now, if you really want the truth, the only reason, there is only one reason why you would be an atheist or an agnostic, and that is you're not interested in truth. But if you're fair-minded, if you want to think for yourself, I urge you to follow the facts. Now, Yaakov Ramzo, you showed me a hidden mass message in a text written 800 years before Jesus came to earth, Isaiah the Jewish prophet in the Jewish scriptures in the 53rd chapter clearly said that one would come that would not be recognized by our people, but by his wounds we would be healed. And a hidden message in that which you revealed is, let, let me read this exactly, Yeshua, Hebrew for Jesus, is my name. Yeshua is my name. That's awesome. What is, here's what I want to know. Was this, I want to be candid with you, was this a coincidence? What is the probability of this occurring in code in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah? When we look at this scientifically, Sid, the statisticians have analyzed just this one, this one area of prophecy with the name of Yeshua Shmi in it, Jesus is my name. And to their final deductions, they figured approximately 50 quadrillion to one. The chances of it happening by just happenstance is 50 quadrillion to one. Help, help me out. Quadrillion. How many zeros? I mean, I have problems with a million. A quadrillion. I, don't, I can't well, even picture that. Uh, you, you can write 15 zeros down on a blackboard and add 50 to it, and that's your answer. Did you hear that? 15 zeros on a blackboard, put 50 in front of it, try doing that in your checkbook. <laughs> the odds are 50 quadrillion to, to one. To one. That it which would means it's not chance. a probability. It's not it, a probability. It is it's, not a probability. It's an absolute science. It's uh, closer to absolute science than you sitting here or you, me sitting here. There is more truth in that than me even existing, and we know I exist because I'm sitting here talking to you. How many times have you personally, through your research, found in code the name of Jesus in his Hebrew form, Yeshua, in the Jewish scriptures? From the very first book of Genesis, starting with the first Yod in Bereshit, it means in the beginning, there his name starts to appear, right there. And counting an equidistant sequence, which is called Shalav, over and over, not just one time from that point, but all the way through Genesis and all the way through Exodus, overlapping from one book to the next and overlapping to finally we finish the Torah and we go into the Tanakh and then we go to the, uh, the Psalms and so forth, and it continues. His name is called the Word of God from the very beginning to the end. In Proverbs... Yes. There is a, like a riddle that King oh, Solomon yes. gives us. That's awesome. There. And, and it, it, it's, uh, I like to, to uh, play a game with this riddle. Very who good. has ascended to high? Who has descended? Who has created all of the universe? What is his name? And the answer is, if you ask someone that's a mensch, that means a human, they'll yes. say, God created everything. And then it says, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? You guys, this is a very famous proverb in question that he's talking about. And Yaakov went there because just like I would have done with the computer, um, Yaakov remembered all of these very significant places in the Bible that seem to um, be telling us something. And in that particular scripture, it implies that there is a father and that there is a son. Okay, this is significant. Uh, listen to what Cody found there. What did you find in that okay. in Proverbs? What is so interesting about this in the original Mesoteric text? That's Proverbs, the thirtieth chapter, the yes, fourth verse. Yes, and the fourth verse in the original Hebrew. It says, "What is my name, and what is my son's name? Surely you know. Hmm. Not can one tell. Surely. It says, surely you know. That is the Hebrew word there." And that's the true translation of that. But what's so interesting, and the word me, which means who has ascended and who has formed the 
the foundations of the world. From that yod in that particular word, counting every 22 letters now, mm -hmm. 22 letters in the alphabet, you count every 22 letters the same way we did in Isaiah 53, and you come up with another phrase. It's Yeshua Shai, which means Jesus is the gift. <gasps> Yes, and that Jesus is, also, is the gift. Also, Wait, no, 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 yes. stop, 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 stop. <laughs> calm down, you're just getting too excited, Yaakov. Do you realize what he just said? He asked the riddle, the answer is God, then the, the, then the Jewish uh, uh, writer in Proverbs states, what is his son's name, and then in code, it answers the riddle. Surely you know in the Hebrew, Yeshua, Hebrew for Jesus, the gift. Let me say that again. Do you understand the significance of this? This overwhelming evidence. So you found it in these two. And and this is this is confirmed, by the way, you guys. I reproduce every single one of the, these that he says. And it's indeed true. We're going to rework one of them in Isaiah 53 in just a few minutes. Two places. What about something that is astounding to me? I, as a Jew, Yaakov, I cannot believe in the Koran for one reason. Yes. The Tanakh does not predict a Koran is coming. I can't. I can't be a um, uh, a um, uh, of any group. Rather, rather than list the names, I can't be a Mormon. The Book of Mormonism is not predicted in the Jewish scriptures. I right. can only be what my Jewish scriptures predict. That's right. The only reason that I personally as a Jew believe in Jesus is the Jewish scriptures say in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, the 31st verse, behold, the days come in which I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, which they violated in Egypt, but under this covenant, there'll be two things. Number one, I, God, will remember their sins no more. And number two, they will know me. Now, I must believe in the new covenant because my Jewish scriptures tell me I must do it. As a Jew, I have no choice. But now, your research in this book, Yeshua, the Hebrew factor, <laughs> overwhelming. Tell, tell me what you found in code. What is so interesting about this is that the Lord said that he would write his laws upon our heart and that he was speaking to the house of Judah and he was speaking to the house of Israel. It's interesting that he would mention these two names, Judah and Israel, because we know that Judah is out of Israel, but they're like separate here. But you need to go to Ezekiel 37th chapter when it says in the last days that the two trees that are separated, one is the house of Judah, Beit Yehuda, one is the house of Israel, Beit Israel, which are the ten tribes that were separated from the two, which was the house of Judah, that he would bring the two sticks and make them one, when he was ready to make the new covenant. Now we go back to Jeremiah 31, and we see Brik Karashah, which is the new covenant that he would make with us, and write it upon our hearts, and in there. It's the most beautiful thing, from the Mem uh, in Brik Karashah, I mean the, the Chet in Brik Karashah, counting every 99th letter, spells Mashiach. He's the one that will ratify the new covenant. Uh, hold that yeah. thought, and don't you dare go away. Did you hear that? The new covenant that the Jewish prophet said would come, it says Jesus would ratify it. Oy vey, what more do you need? Don't go away. We'll be right back. One of the most important, here, let me let you hold on to the book. One of the most important, that book must be very precious to you. It, it, it reflects is. so much work on your part. Uh, I, I, let me explain a few things. I knew that his name was in there, Sid. And I couldn't prove it until I learned enough Hebrew to prove it. And as the Spirit of the Lord moved, he would direct me to a certain passage. He would tell me where the passage was. I would be outside praying, and I'd come running into the house, and my wife, Yafa, would be sitting there, and I said, the Lord has just showed me something. I must look it up in the Hebrew. I'd open the Hebrew Scriptures, and there would be the name of Yeshua, over and over and over. And I just thank Again.
This is where the Holy Spirit says, go here and go there. You will hear this voice direct you and tell you where to go and where to look. All right. Thank God, that it, this is his work. This is not my work. And I give Jesus all the credit. Yaakov, one of the major tenets of Judaism is found in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus. Yes. It says, I have given the blood upon the altar as atonement for sin. It is the blood that makes atonement for sin. And we Jews, most of us don't know today, but when the temple was destroyed, we could not have the Jewish way of forgiveness of sin. It's, it says no clearly sacrifice. in Leviticus that it is the blood, nothing but the blood of an unblemished lamb that makes atonement for sin. So that is clear. No temple, that means no animal sacrifice. Right. No animal sacrifice, that means no forgiveness of sin. So what the rabbis did is they had one of two choices. They could have recognized, as many did, I might add, and many Jewish people are coming to faith today, they, they could have recognized Yeshua as the Messiah. Certainly God would not leave his ancient Jewish people in the lurch. Or they could have invented a new form of Judaism called rabbinical Judaism. We know what many of our people did, unfortunately, and yes. today our people don't even think for themselves. They say whatever the rabbi says, That's tradition, exactly right. fiddler on the roof, how sad because it's... The difference between no, the, knowing God right. or just the, believing he exists. The scripture, the Tanakh says that everyone shall know him for themselves. You guys real high, realize how profound it is that these are two Jewish men who came to, to the knowledge of Yeshua, right? And what they're talking about is, is Hebrew codes in the Hebrew text that point to Yeshua. So this was, at the time, groundbreaking information to me. And I was, I was so drawn to it themselves they don't need to rely on anybody else and everyone will know him i knew the implications of the two sticks coming together one day however what's interesting when you're talking about the blood sacrifice and you're talking about the anointing of the high priest in the book of leviticus or vayikra in hebrew and you go to the 17th to the 21st chapter in that area explains all these things talking about the blood sacrifice talking about the anointing okay so what he's talking about is in this particular place in leviticus talking about the, the purpose of the lamb and the sacrifice, you find something very profound here. I've also found this code, and, and we can work that at some other time together. Uh, again, these are all Yeshua codes, and how Yeshua is consistent all through the scriptures, um, where he, his name appears in very profound ways. Not just his name, but sentences, right? of the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, which was Aaron, Moses' brother at the time. And here, encoded in that message there, in that beautiful scripture, it says, Hendam Yeshua. And All right. So in Leviticus 21.10, he's telling us, and he found, look, very small skip here between these letters. Hendam Yeshua, which means behold the blood of Yeshua, right? This is what I mean by the underlying text is going to have the answers. It doesn't care about your opinion, not one bit. And if you hold on to, to your, your belief dogmatic, when the text is showing you something, showing you profound truth there, what will happen is you, you'll, you'll get into this place where the, the, the Holy Spirit will let you go into that place of, of delusion. And we see that a lot with, with some code searchers who cannot think outside the box. They cannot let the codes direct them because of they, they want to see what they want to see. And I had to deal with this years ago, you guys, with Preacher of Rapture and things like that. When I, when I discovered it was not biblical, the codes could not confirm it. It actually points into another direction, which implies that, that it's, it's, a, it's a gathering at the second coming, okay? And so this was a conundrum for me, but yet, I felt like the, the the scriptures were confirming something, and so I I, I observed it outside the box, and uh, you know made a made a decision that that was you know really a a turning point in my life. Uh, I was brought up preacher of rapture most of my life in in the Pentecostal church, and um, and when I found this truth, I got to be honest with you, I was devastated. I, I, I and then it turned into anger. 
I was angry at the, the ones that taught me something that I, looked at, to me was not true. And, uh, you know, I went through this whole process, right? So these codes can reconcile these unknowns for us, right? And, and listen, with Christianity, we got thousands of opinions. Men write books on every different scripture, every different doctrine, right? Who's right? Who's wrong? You know, I remember when I was following, uh, you know, famous, famous guys years ago, and I put all my faith in what they were saying. And I had to learn a, ma a, a, a major lesson there that I was following man and not what the word says. You understand what I'm telling you here? We got to get away from what man is teaching and get back to what Yah wants us to understand. And so that's how these things play, play a role here. The underlying encoded text is going to give you the answer every time. Every time the answer is always there. It does not care about this preacher, that preacher, that guy writing a book and who's right, who's wrong. Yah's truth is Yah's truth. Okay, sometimes men are right. Many times they're wrong. And I was in that camp. Okay, so as a code searcher, you guys have to get to a, to a, a point where you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, right? Don't go into it dogmatic. It's okay to have, an, have a thought, have a, have a hypothesis, right? But let let the codes and the Holy Spirit lead you to the truth. He will do that. I promise you. You will start hearing the Holy Spirit say, go here and go there. Or give you an idea. Or inspire you in some way. And you go type that thing out, right? And it takes you, takes you somewhere profound. Okay? I'm telling you the secrets of Code Searcher. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't raised in uh, yeshivas and and raised by rabbis. So what what Yah has given me is a blessing and an insight from from my journey and my walk. And I'm not unique to I'm not unique. Yeah, you guys. Everybody has a purpose in a, in a he's got a plan for you, okay? And so I knew this in my soul that I wasn't the only one supposed to be doing this. Chris Way is not the only one supposed to be doing this, and all the others, Martin and the others. Everybody should be doing this, especially if you feel this drawing in your spirit where you want to you want to know a deeper level of understanding with the scriptures and not just what they're telling you in the pulpit, right? You want to be able to search that thing out for yourself and look at the encoded text, right? What Yankov is telling us in his presentation here is literally. In some 300 uh, uh, verses throughout the scriptures that talk about the Messiah, in every case, there's an underlying code there that tells us the answer. Does that make sense? You guys follow what I'm saying? The Bible interprets itself. And, that, and it's not just about Yeshua codes. This is on doctrinal codes. This is on historical things. You will see also a correlation with historical things where the, the, the plain text, which may be a, be a verse or something that's, that's timeless, seems to speak to the context of whatever you're searching in. Everybody follow? So this is very profound. We can go and find this encoded. Hain Dom Yeshua. Behold the blood of, of Yeshua. And it's not, it's not just there once, as you're going to see with Yeshua Shmi. It's not there just one time. It's there many times. And, and my explanation for that is Yeshua told us that the whole of the word testifies under me. So what is it going to be? It's going to have his name all the way through. And that's what Yaakov is telling us here, right? Interesting is he couldn't confirm this with a computer. He could only look at chapter and verses like this. Like you're looking right here, right now. You have an advantage, you guys. That's what I'm trying to convey here. You guys have such an advantage and such an opportunity to use technology and computer programs to do something that Isaac Newton couldn't do, something that Yaakov Ramsel couldn't do, things that, that rabbis a thousand years ago could not do. They could only count by hand. You understand? And it means, behold, the blood of Jesus. Oh, 
You realize what you've just said? Yes. Do you realize what Yaakov just said? I mean, if you don't, keep listening. I'm going to tell you, in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus, which says you must have an animal sacrifice in the temple, it states, behold the blood of Jesus. Mm. Let me say that again. Behold the blood of Jesus. Yaakov, you're a Jewish man like myself. There are many Jewish people that would say, Meshumad. Yes. Traitor. That's exactly right. Give up this Jesus. Come back to our community. What would you say? I'd say no. There's no turning back. Once you've met him face to face, once you have an encounter with this wonderful Savior, you know, Jesus was more Jewish than anyone because he was kosher Jew. He was complete. He was 100% without sin. He was the design that God had designed for us to be like, and Yeshua come to fulfill it for us. He was God manifested in the flesh. Yeshua is the Son of God, there's no question. How can I turn back? In code, have you found Yeshua is the Son of God? I also found Ben Yeshua. I found... Son of... Son of... uh, uh, Yeshua the Son. Yeshua the Son, okay. And then I found, uh, taking the book of uh, uh, Ruth, Sefer Ruth, the book of Ruth, Ruth. uh, where it talks about Boaz as the kinsman redeemer. In there, every 12th letter, notice 12, 12 tribes represents right. 12. Every 12th letter in the first portion of the book of Ruth spells Melech Yeshua, it means King Jesus. Uh, there he is. <laughs> Listen, I can't think of a better way. <laughs> King, in the book of Ruth, yes. where the Gentiles were grafted in, this That's is exactly not just a Jewish right. thing, <laughs> where the Gentiles were grafted in, it says, King Yeshua. King Yeshua! Oh, wow! King Yeshua! How about you? Is Yeshua, Jesus, your king? You see, God so loves the whole world. He started with his ancient Jewish people to reveal his Messiah. And his ancient Jewish people were faithful to share the good news with the Goyim, with the Gentiles, as was predicted in Torah. A lot of people say Jews should not proselytize. Jews were created to tell the whole world about God. Whether you're Jewish or Gentile, isn't there something more to live for? Isn't there something more to life? If you really want to know God, know him, then I want you to pray a prayer from a sincere heart with me right now. Repeat this prayer out loud after me right now. Say, dear investigative reporter, and I'm here with Yaakov Ramsel. Yaakov is the man that supernaturally heard a word from God and found there were secret codes hidden in the scriptures. Tell me the first time you found a secret code in the Jewish Bible. Uh, Quite a few years ago, I was studying the book of Ruth because it was after the Passover, and you count 50 days till you come to Sukkot or or Shavuot. And I I always study Ruth during this period because that's the counting of the Omer. So I'm in the first chapter and I'm praying. I always pray over my word, and, and God always opens his word unto me. He always has, and he will for anyone. But what is so magnificent, and I think it was a verse 5, Ruth 1, 5. In there I found every 12th letter a magnificent code. And 12 is significant because it speaks of government, it speaks of the nation of Israel. The 12 tribes. The 12 tribes, yes. And so every 12th letter in there spelled Hashet Melech Yeshua. In English, what this means is Jesus is the appointed king. King. Isn't that interesting? What, what? Again, the scripture confirming itself. And, and by the way, I, I fast forwarded to the second time he was on Sidroth. These are both times he was on Sidroth. And and in the second time, he shares a little more information about Isaiah 53, which were extensions that he found. So that, that's kind of why I wanted you to see that. We're going to reconstruct that all in just a moment.
Why would it be in that chapter in Ruth? Any because idea? That is a messianic chapter. The whole book of Ruth is messianic. It talks about the genealogy from Boaz, Obed, Boaz, uh, Jesse, and also David. And in there is a uh, the genealogy leading up because Yeshua, the Messiah, when he would come, which he did come, would be called the son of David. Why? Because he will be the ruling monarch when he comes back. He will be the right. king, not only of Israel, but of the universe. Now explain to me in a simplistic fashion how this code works throughout all of the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures. Let's go to Genesis 1. Let's, mm -hmm. let's start at the beginning. And the first letter, the first word, from the first word is Breshit, which means in the beginning, the first letter is the Bet. Second letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. Every seventh letter, counting the Bet and count seven, and then seven spells created. Well, that's, that's beautiful. Every seventh letter spells created. But from that first letter, the word created is encoded six times in the first six days of creation, starting with that first letter. Well, there's six days of creation. So it stands to reason that the word created would be encoded six times to back up what the surface reading is saying. So that's an example. Now, sometimes the codes might be eight letters apart, counting every eighth letter. It, it's sort of like as a child, I might have played, and I did, I played a game where I'd look at a sheet of paper and it would, wouldn't make any sense, but then I'd have the key to the code. Let's say the key was seven. I would count every seven letters and then write that letter down. Before right. I know it, I'd have a word and then I'd have a sentence. Yes, this is exactly right. One of the most fantastic, most awesome things that God has placed in the Bible is the surface and the foundation of the surface. The foundation of the surface reading of the Torah you and all the way through the You understand what he's telling you? There are two levels of what the scriptures has and even more. Okay, you got the surface text, what's being said on the surface, but then you have what's in the encoded text underneath the surface. So he is groundbreaking here in a time where he wasn't even using a computer, you guys, right? He's doing this by hand, just like the ancient rabbis. But he understands this concept, right? The Tanakh are the codes that back up what the surface reading is saying. I'll give you an example. In Genesis 1, there's 1,671 Hebrew letters that form uh, those 30, uh, 31 verses, which mm -hmm. is six days of creation. In there is encoded at various intervals, some at two letter intervals, some at every third letter, some at every 10th letter, some at every 50th letter, are over 2,000 biblical names that are mentioned later on in the scripture. You know, it's mentioned before these people even existed. That's right. And it, had, it gives information. Is there any explanation besides the fact that God authored the book of Genesis that that could be there? Is there any other explanation? It's been proven scientifically by the statisticians, by the skeptics, and the greatest mathematicians of the world that only someone that had a power that is outside of our space and time could have arranged those letters and that chapter or the whole Bible for that fact, the way they are arranged. So this proves to us that that person that is outside of space and time is none other than the creator God. Hmm. You know, um, I remember my dad who was born in Poland from a traditional Jewish yes. background. He said to me one day, Sid, show me why you believe that the Messiah has already come. Mm. And so I read to him the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And he said to me, show me where it says Jesus in there. And I couldn't show that to him. What's under the surface in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah? That was written 800 years before Jesus came to earth. First, What's in there? First, let me give you the validity of the book of Isaiah. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found the book of Isaiah uh, dated back to about 23, 2400 years ago. It is identical to the Masoretic text that I use today. So no one's tampered with Nobody's it. Nobody's tampered with it. So that gives us validity and credibility to the word. Now, 
in Isaiah 53, the 53rd chapter, there's 667 Hebrew letters that form that whole chapter. But yet there are thousands of codes in there. One day I was praying and I re read Isaiah 53 so many times. I just loved this because it's speaking about my Messiah. He's speaking about my Lord, speaking about somebody that would be executed in my place. And I prayed and I said, Lord, your name is there somewhere. And he spoke to me in my spirit. I could hear his voice. It was so sweet. He said, go to verse 10 and go to the word Yivrik. It means he shall prolong his days and count 20 in reverse. Again, well, I again, the Holy Spirit say, go here and go there. I ran inside. I was outside walking as I do and I pray in the morning. I ran inside, I opened up my Hebrew Tanakh and I started counting from that area every 20th letter. And my, my friend, I'll tell you, the scriptures opened up like a volume, like heaven was opened up. And he showed me in there every 20th letter was a phrase, Yeshua Shmi, which means Jesus is my name. And from the first party, this is what's interesting. My name is Jesus or Jesus is my name. I didn't stop there. I did the complete analysis at every possible combination in Isaiah 6, 6, with, uh, Isaiah 53 with the 667 letters. And I did thousands and thousands of codes that come out of there. But the one that stands out, it's like the sparkle in the gem, is the one that says, Ma'al Yeshua Shmi Aznir Ergnai. Which and, means? Which means from above. My strong name is Jesus. Okay, so in the last time he was on Sid Roth, he had found Yeshua Shmi. But what he's telling us here is he found extensions. He found extensions at either end. So um, this is from above. My strong name is Yeshua, the light of yod heh vav -Heh, near or nar yod heh vav -Heh. We're going to look at that in just a moment. But this, this is a great example of, of looking at codes that you found already, and you find extensions that you didn't see before. That, that are even more profound and even add more validity because it's not something that you were looking for. But it's an anomaly that appeared after you found priori and post priori. So this would be the priori right here. And this is the post priori, all of these letters here, what he found after the fact. Okay, does everybody follow? The light of the Lord. Wow, from above, my strong name is Jesus, the light, the light. In the Torah, tell me what they found. Okay, a friend of mine who uh, did a research, and he, I don't look for my name, but he wanted to find it for me, and he did. And it's in the Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, right around where the Shema is. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah, and I, in Deuteronomy 6.4. 6, 4. 4. And so in there is encoded every 80th letter, Yaakov Ramzo, Halalia. And it means I will praise. Mm. Oh, I will praise the Lord. So th I thought that was great because I do this. Uh, that's nothing new to me. Mm -hmm. But right next to my name. At but the wait a second. If I could have anything written next to my name, I would like... I will praise the Lord. I can't think of anything better. That's the greatest thing because that's all I do. That's, and what, that's, David, all I that's do. what David did. He was that's a man right. after God's own heart. That's what you are, Yaakov. They find anything else in there oh, about you? Uh, no, but I did. Then I started to say I verified it. Mm -hmm. And so I did the complete analysis. In other words, uh, I did 80 codes at one time, 80 researches at one time. I don't use a computer. I do it all by hand like the ancient rabbis did many centuries ago. Why don't you use a computer? Because some of the computers have flaws, hmm. but the word doesn't. And everything I verify by the word by hand count, I count each letter. That, that is the rabbinical way. That is, absolutely. So what else did you find? Well, next to my name also is... Do you guys understand how much time that process takes? I don't, I don't think you can comprehend counting every possible variable every two every three every four every five every six every seven every eight every nine ten eleven twelve all the way through the sequential order 
That's what it means to search by hand, you guys. And so the fact that we can use a computer program that can search all of those simultaneously is a huge advantage. You follow what I'm saying? Shlavim. And that is the modern Hebrew term for equidistance letter sequence. And that's exactly what I do. That's the technical name for finding codes in the Bible. Exactly. An equal distance of the letters. And then another phrase that comes in there. Uh, that would have been enough. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> oh, yes. It's Oti Haish. It means the man of letters. And that's what the scholars had called many centuries ago. Anybody that did analysis on the, on the codes, the encrypted uh, messages that came out of the Bible, they called him a man of letters. How could that be in the Torah? How could that be in Deuteronomy 6.4? It's you know, the Shema. Well, God had to put it there because he wrote, remember, he wrote the commandments. He wrote the Bible. Now, here's another thing that's fascinating. My son and daughter's name is encoded next to mine and also my wife, Yaffa, right next to me. And it describes my wife physically. So I know it's my wife. You see, it describes her physically. And you met my wife. Now, Yaakov, do you believe that everyone's name is encoded in the scripture somewhere? I know everyone name, everyone's name is there. From Genesis 1 through the Torah. You guys. <laughs> And I just want to stop right here and consider this fact. Can you imagine, no matter who you are watching this video, one of the students or anybody else, that your name is encoded in the scriptures, okay? That could, for someone like the creator that says he knows every hair on your head, he knows every sparrow that falls from the sky, right? So if that is true, and the codes are true, and everything that was, is, and will be is encoded there, then that must mean your name is there because you're part of the creation. He created you, and he created you for such a time as this and for a purpose. Did you understand that? Jonathan is not unique. I'm not some special person just because I'm called a code surgeon and I got a channel and all that kind of stuff. No, I'm just a vessel. And so are you. You're just as important as I am. And some may even be more important than me. I'm nobody, right? You're going to see in this course that your name is encoded with great detail. And not just your name, all, all, all associated people to you, your, your kids, your, your mom and your dad, you, you, know, uh, you know, tragic things that's happened in your life. You will see that in a plain text that runs through in the lives of other people in the text, you'll see the same kind of themes running through your name, right? And you'll be able to identify with that. You'll be able to read something and be like, oh my gosh, you know? And it'll, it'll ring home something true to you. Your name is there. Yakov discovered this many years ago and he wasn't doing it by computer. He was doing it by hand, and so he was on to something, and so was Isaac Newton whenever whenever he existed. More than, a, was it almost a thousand years now? Eight, 500 years? I don't even know. He knew that there was a code there, right? You have access to it. Torah. You go through the whole Torah. Everybody, everything past, present, and future is in there, also what they will do. Now, hmm. what's so magnificent, the 66 important Jewish people that they did rich researches on the last, that lived in the last thousand years, they found all their names in the Torah. The 66, what, most famous? Most famous Jewish men, yes. All uh, of them in the Torah. In the Torah, they found their date of birth. Their now, exact date of birth or the year? Exact, no, the exact date of birth. They also found later, some others tried to disprove it. And later they found the city they were born in. My now goodness. that is amazing. And a lot of these people were Polish Jewish people like yourself. See, my grandfather come, came from Poland. Uh, you're a Jewish man. Well, Ashkenazi. <laughs> yes, Ashkenazi, yes. And it was so magnificent that all these wonderful things are in there. It doesn't excite me as much 
is finding the names of God, especially our Messiah. That excites me more than anything else. Let's take uh, what the rabbis would call a messianic prophecy. Uh, yes. Proverbs, the 30th chapter, uh, the fourth verse, wh wh who created the heavens, the, the earth, what is his name? Yes. Obviously, you're going to say God, but then the, the, the proverb goes on to say, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? What did you find in there? You know, it's, it's so superior to any writing that's outside the Bible. There's no writing that I know of that can even come close to what the Bible writes. Now, in there it says, surely you know, not can one tell. That's the regular Hebrew rendition, okay? The, that's the perfect mm -hmm. uh, interpretation surely of that. You surely know. you know. What he's does that mean? Us, means we should, we should know for sure. We should know for sure, for sure. what his son's name is. Huh. Yeah. So what did you find encoded there? Every 20 two letters. Now 22 speaks of the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. There's 22 Hebrew letters in the alphabet. Every 22 letters is spelled Shai Yeshua, which means Jesus is the gift. And that's the name of his son. It identifies his son from the book of Proverbs. This was almost 3,000 years ago when that was written. Well, when it Solomon. says, surely you shall know, <laughs> then right. obviously that would be encoded in there. And also in there, it talks about the temple. It talks about the sacrificial lamb. It talks about Ashami, it's my sin offering. That's in All Proverbs. In the... Yes, in that one little verse. Huh. Well, let's go back to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah that was written some 800 years before Yeshua, the Messiah, mm -hmm. came to earth. Uh, what did you find there? Okay, in Isaiah 53, 5, where it says, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. In there is a code, every 21 letters, it says, They shall pierce his flesh. Hmm. They shall pierce his flesh. And adjacent to that is shalim, which means uh, the, the, the cross, or like the uh, execution stake. You see, next to that is, this is amazing, Slavi Shalos. It means three execution stakes. And there were three, three on the hill. I'll tell you yes, what, hold, hold that thought. I mean, this is 800 years before the Messiah came to earth. Yeshua, about 2,000 years ago, until it was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. Now, also, the evil Roman city is encoded there. They were the conquerors of Israel at that time. Also, Caesar is encoded there. Now, he was the, the head man of Rome at the time. He was the dictator, so to speak. But <clears throat> that's, that's, I knew that would be there. I had no problem with this. What excited me was all the disciples. All that, the first followers of the Messiah. All 12 of the disciples, but one was encoded in Isaiah 53 in that little pocket of area there. And, and uh, so magnificent what God had placed in there. It described some of them. It called them, uh, Tal Talmud, you know, the Talmud. Talmudim. Yeah, Talmudim, the disciples, uh, the students. And the one that was missing was the one man, Yehuda, or Judas, that betrayed Yeshua for 30 pieces of silver. I, I wonder... I just wonder if the Tanakh could not be the book of life because you, we pray that our name not be removed from the book of life and, yes. and Yehuda, Judas, was removed. That's right. Okay. Here's my take on that. I'm glad you brought that up. This is so important. I believe there are many books because we have the book of remembrance from the book of Malachi mm -hmm. where those that thought about the Lord and feared him and uh, followed his commandments. That's called the book of remembrance. In that day when we stand before the king of kings, those books will be open. Many books will be open. And the B Lamb's book of life will be open. Now the, the Torah and the Tanakh, that's the old, the complete, what is called normally the Old Testament. I like to call it the first covenant. Mm -hmm. And it is the book of life, but it is the book of life and death. It is a complete history of God's creation, of every person that ever lived, etc., all the way down to the consummation of the age. That is not the book that uh, the redeemed are in. They're in there, 
But that is not the book where only the redeemed are in. What is the book that only those that are going to heaven is in? That's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Those that accepted the sacrifice, those who accepted. And by the way, I, I believe that book is in heaven. I don't believe we have access to the Lamb's Book of Life, but I, I do believe what he, what the concept that he's talking about, everything that was, is, and will be, is encoded there. So um, to my knowledge, Yaakov only made a, 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 about two appearances on um, Sid Roth and a couple appearances on uh, uh, what was uh, years ago, Prophecy Watchers, with, with J.R. Church and, uh, J. Uh, and Stearman there long time ago uh again yakov didn't use a computer matter of fact the internet was not even a real thing when he was when all this was recorded so he was doing everything by hand but years later i would say about maybe a decade later um i had been given the the book bible codes from my stepfather and, and that kind of rekindled my interest in it and then a few years later i was able to get a code program and yada 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 here we are now and so this is where i started right here with yakov ramsel and I, I think he is a you guys a pioneer and he's definitely worthy of being honored and um you know for, especially for you guys that are starting new i wanted you to expose you to yakov because this is where, where this whole concept was born for me okay so i have incredible reverence and respect for yakov and uh, i know yah used him at the, which ended up being toward the end of his life right imagine if Yah had done this years ago when he was a young man right it, he grew in his life and become an, an old man and and then suddenly had this interest and in, you know was searching codes and then he dies right so but i want to i want to memorialize that uh with you all we're not going to finish this video we're going to transition now over and rework one of the codes he was just talking about. So let's do that right now. And uh, you can see how this kind of became a thing for me. The, literally, literally, the very first code that I looked for is I went to look for these letters that he said was in Isaiah 53. That, for me, that was the very first code. That was where I started. And so I want to take you and reconstruct that for you and work that with you. Um, because I didn't know anything. I was, you know, I was just very eager. That was the only thing that I had working to my favor is that I was very um, voracious and, and wanting to know more about this. And um, and so I had to study hard the letters and learn the letters. I misspelled words all the time and um, I would get no result and uh, would get really discouraged and you know, little by little, I started learning more and listening to rabbis and especially Glazers. And by the way, who does not search out of the first five books? I did what Yaakov did. I, I searched all of them. And uh, it, it is turned into what it is today. Okay. So let's go to when you guys get the Taurus off. And you are ready to search a code. This is what you're going to see right here. This, this console right here. Okay. All right. So remember when I said, remember the, the, the number 20? When he said he found Yeshua is my name at a skip of 20. I want you to wanted you to remember that because when we search the whole text, not just Isaiah 53, we're going to search the whole text for Yeshua Shmi, all right? And this is how you do that. The very first thing you do is you hit this icon right here, which is like, I think it's a little uh, scholar with, you know, one of the, the, the um, graduate hats on or something like that. That's what it is. Or some kind of little rabbi icon or something like that. But whatever it is, that icon right there will bring up this, this part right here. And now, from this point, we can search a Bible book. So we could go to just Isaiah, or we can go to Jeremiah, whatever, right? And so we can, we can key that in right here. But for the sake of, of this demonstration, we're going to search the whole Bible. Because I want to show to you that Yeshua, when he said that the whole word testifies unto me, he meant it. 
right? So we're going to look for the very term that Yaakov looked for, but we're going to search not just Isaiah 53 like he did when, when the Holy Spirit said go here and go there. We're going to search the whole text, okay? And so I would encourage you, you guys when you do this, when you start searching codes, um, unless the Holy Spirit says go here and go there, meaning like a chapter or a verse or something like that, when you're doing your searches, search the whole Bible, right? That's a good place to start. So that's where we're starting, the whole Bible. And the next thing is we're going to come to this icon here or this little um, whatever you call it in, in the jargon. We're going to bring up the, the, the keys, right? And so we're going to spell out Yeshua Shmi. Yeshua Shmi. Is what Yaakov looked for. Enter. And then we're going to next. We're going to search all possible skips. Now at this point you can. Customize your range if you want to. If you wanted to look between. You know one and ten thousand. You could do that. Right. Or scan only every seven letters. Or whatever. Or find just the smallest. Right. You can set all those parameters. But I would encourage you. To look for all possible skips. Now, those larger skips are not going to be st uh, the most statistically um, profound, I have to tell you. So we're casting, and when we, when we do this, searching for all possible skips, we're, we're, we're casting a broad net. We're looking for, I say this would be more like uh, um, Monte Carlo method, where we're searching all possibilities, right? This is the best we can get with this code program to do Monte Carlo method. Search all possible skips. And then you choose from those results, if there are results, the smallest. The smallest is going to be more statistically valid, more statistically impressive, in other words. Okay, so we're going to search all possible skips for Yeshua Smi. And the very next thing we do is we hit next, next, and now the computer skip uh, is searching. Now you're seeing what would take a man years and years and years to do, searching all of the text, not just Isaiah 53, all of the text is just taking a, a fraction of that time to a matter of, of seconds, right? Look at what, what the result is. We have 2,312 results of Yeshua Shmi. So the very first code, or, or the, the very first one that I worked, one of the most famous from Yaakov Ramsel, where he went specifically in a place to look, Yeshua Shmi, Yeshua is my name. We see that if you search the whole text, there's more, almost 3,000 results, which tells us what Yeshua said is the whole text testifies unto me. We can see his name all over it. It says, Yeshua is my name, right? And that's going to be literally every, if we go here and search every one of these tables, and that's what they are, for every result, this is a table. We can go to any one of these and search it as a valid table, and it's going to reveal something very profound. But what we want to do is we want to go to the one that Yaakov is talking about, because this one is, the most profound. So if you look at the top, you see you have the keyword, which is what we just searched, Yeshua Shmi. We have the skip length, begins, ends, and in what book in this for this um, search? It's in the whole Tanakh. And it tells us which one was found first, second, third, fourth, and so on. But if we if we hit up here, we we tap that to skip length and then tap it again. Um, you know, it gives us results here, right? Remember how I said, remember number 20? There's number 20 right there. This is the very one that Yaakov found. So, so at this point, we can choose any one of these tables and we can work it till our hearts content. And let me tell you something, you guys, you will lose track of time. It's like time stands still when you start searching codes. <laughs> and I laugh at that because when you realize that, you'll think back to when I told you this 
and you'll start to laugh. You'll be like, oh my gosh, right? You've been sitting there for eight hours and you thought it was 30 minutes, right? Because you can get so drawn in to looking at each one of these codes and all the scriptures that are that's going to be revealed to you. And then all of the ELS code that you're going to find. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is this is beyond miraculous. This is beyond coincidence and probability. There's something to this. So, okay, so we're going to this one right here. And uh, you can use this icon to change that background color. And I would recommend doing that because the longer you look at these codes with the white background, it'll burn your eyes, you guys. And I'm telling you from 15 years of experience, that is the case. So this is what Yaakov found. This is Isaiah 53. And you can see here in the margin, even though it's very low down, it, it's not so in, in this part right here. But one of the things you might know right off the bat or see right off the bat is you have a huge margin on either side, right? Here's why. Because we're looking at the scriptures on a cylinder. And because this cylinder is only 20 letters wide, it's a very narrow cylinder, sort of like this salt shaker right here, right? Very narrow. We could look at a at a cylinder that's very big, right? And so this whole margin on either side would be filled in with letters, right? But because we're looking at something so focused in one chapter, it's very narrow. Everybody follow me. So everything that you're about to see is even more exponentially important, right? Because here's the thing. This is the chapter about the suffering servant. More commonly known as, you know, this is the, the chapter that predicts the cross because of everything that happens to Yeshua. And the fact that we can see Yeshua is my name. And by the way, Yaakov found later extensions on this. And we talked about that in the, in the last class extensions after you find an access term for for this demonstration yeshua is my name you always want to look for an extension above and below because it may you know extend what you're looking at and indeed it does and so this is what we have yeshua is my great name from on high is now the access term and so now we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 letters in sequential order that actually says a sentence. Yeshua is my great name from on high. So it's making a very bold declaration here in Isaiah 53 that seems to be in talking about a person and not a nation. I don't agree with the rabbis. I believe this is specifically talking about a person right here, right? Everybody follow. Yeshua is my great name from on high. And so now, once we got to this point, right, after we've got an access term, this is your starting point. And again, you could have worked any one of those codes that we just saw. They would have been the same way. You have an essential term that you're looking for initially, which is like the combination on a lock. Now you've unlocked something in the scriptures. And once you get a matrix, now you can look for what's called ELS. Now, the, your initial term is also an ELS, but it's like, again, like the, uh, it's the initial ELS. It's, it unlocks a clock. It unlocks something. Does everybody follow? This could be any kind of, uh, any kind of access term. It could be your name. It could be a historical event. All kinds of things are going to unlock something that's sealed in the text that seems to have a, a correlation to the plain text that's running through. In many cases, it does. And, and you guys, you, you, today over in Discord, I posted a video where in that video, it shows the biased and unbiased of codes. And so you saw things where people were talking about codes in Moby Dick. And, um, you know, how some of the, some of the things seemed to mirror what was happening in the Bible. That was a very old video, and I probably should have you know, posted that with a caveat, but um, those actual codes that they claim are in Moby Dick, 
we can't reproduce. And so that tells us that there must be some kind of funny business here, that something's going on here. It's not actually accurate. Um, every code that I show you, you'll be able to reproduce. And, and if somebody has the same code program in the same text, they should be able to reproduce whatever you show in a code. And the fact that they show that and they show that you can find different things in Moby Dick and we can't reproduce that even though we have Moby Dick as a, as a program, um, tells us that, that back in the early 90s, there were such a, a huge opposition to code research that they were willing to forge you know, you know, some of the results there. However, with some of the things that we see in the scriptures, we something we we see something that that cannot be explained, uh, and, and if we look at it mathematically, it seems that it's indicating it's off the chart. It's astronomical. It's beyond probability and uh, you know repetition and randomness. There seems to be something more there, right? And for me, um, I believe this is right up Yah's alley that he would prove himself in such a way that he would encode his word to have multifaceted information that we can extract from it, okay? So the fact that we can find in a chapter talking about what seems to be a man suffering, Yeshua is my great name on high, right? So from at this point, we can start searching, searching facts like, you know, okay, so what happened with Yeshua when he was crucified, right? Well, let's look for crucified, right? And so this is how you would do that. Um, by the way, let's go to translators so you can see uh, these words. We're going to look for Netzlav. Netzlav means <coughs> crucified. Okay? Netzlav. Let me share a screen here so you can see this. Netzlav, or if you don't know how to, if you if, let's say you didn't know how to how to say cru crucified, I should have did this in reverse. <laughs> Supposing you don't know how to say crucified, right, or even spell it right, let's just say crucified, right, and it's spelled with a C. Crucified. There it is. There. It give you it'll give it to you in the ink. Jonathan, we can't hear you. I think you hit the mute button. I didn't mean to do that. All right, sorry about that. All right, so if we would just went to Google, and you can do this with any translator. And let's just say you didn't understand. You didn't. You didn't know how to say crucified in hebrew you can put that in you can spell it wrong it'll give you the it'll give you the right right so you can it, you there's a little margin of error there so if you don't know what you're doing it, the, the computer will kind of tell you oh do you mean this right so we're looking at crucified slav slav is what the word Crucified, we can put Netzlav. Netzlav means uh, is crucified, even though it doesn't show that on Google Translate, uh, or will be crucified. Um, Netzlav. That may be where we want to look for, right? In this in this code. So let's go back to the code. And we're going to look for Netzlav. So again, we're looking at Yeshua is my great name on high. We know that, you know, what this text says, and we'll read it in just a moment. But we know everything that happened at the, at the, at the uh, cross, right? So he was crucified. Right. Uh, So let's look for that. Netzlav. Netzlav. Watch what happens. 
Let me change the color because it doesn't seem apparent in this. <laughs> Look for it again. That's love. You see it? Now, we see three letters in, in a line, but because this is such a small strip of letters, this other letter is going around the cylinder. But, you know, we could... We could line those up, I guess. by manipulating that, that cylinder there. Netslav. All four letters are there. And what, what you see me doing is basically turning that cylinder around. Right? We see Netslav. Now we could go through every single, like, he, like uh, Yakov said, we can go through every single name of all the people there, um, all the disciples, except for you, um, um, Judah. We can also see, I thought this was really interesting because in the movie uh, by Mel Gibson, you can see that Mary pretty much stays by Yeshua's side the whole time, right? And when I first found this, I thought, wow, that is amazing that Mary is next to his side right here, very closely, his mother. Not just one time, there's four Marys here, which is what we see in the crucifixion story in the, in the Gospels. And again, this text that we're looking at was written 800 years before Yeshua. And here we can see his mother is right by his side in this very text. That seems to imply something very terrible happening to this person. What the context? Yeshua is my name, right? Um, we could look for something like, uh, well, he's the Messiah, right? That's another. That's another thing we could search for. It's said that he is the Messiah, All right? Can we test that in this? Absolutely, we can look for Messiah or the. Uh, no. <laughs> the Mashiach. And I may have this blown up a little too far. Let me back it down a little bit. Is it the Mashiach or Mashiach? Oh, let's, let's see. All right, Mashiach. Let's look for. Mashiach. And then we see it there several times. Like several witnesses, right? I like, I like the one that crosses over here. Mashiach here. So let's remove all the others. And you'll see this as well. You know, this is kind of like an overkill confirmation that indeed we're talking about the Mashiach. But I like the close proximity of the one that I'm leaving in this code. Do you guys see it? Crossing. Sometimes you'll have to clean your codes up like this so we can see what's happening. So we had Mashiach appear more than one time. But this one, which shares a letter in the name Yeshua and crossing it, is the one we like. We call that proximity. It's the best proximity. Right? Let's go and look at what the text says. Uh, just to, for, for those that don't. And what you do is you can go over. And uh, break it down to tiles like this. And you can click on a letter. And bring this icon up. And we can look at it in the Hebrew. And then we can look at it in the English at the same time. So even if you don't read Hebrew or speak Hebrew, you can still see what it is in the English and correlate that to what, what it says in the Hebrew. Right? So 
So we clicked on these, these this series of letters up here, right in this column here. It's at the end of uh, 53. We want to hear what it says. Uh, And again, the, the text confirming itself. Who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of Yah re, uh, revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted. And, and again, it says man. It doesn't say the nation. So I agree with what Yaakov says here. It's a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we, dis we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. And yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of Elohim and afflicted for he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone into his own way and the Adonai hath hid hath, excuse me hath laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted, and yet he opened not his mouth. And he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken and he was made and, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. It's very specific. Yet it pleased Yah to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. And when thou make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall pro prolong his days. And the pleasure of Yah shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. And by his knowledge of, shall many righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I, I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many. <clears throat> you tell me that that is the nation of Israel. No, this is a man, and it and it and it spells out everything that happens to Yeshua, and it bears his name in that text. Yeshua is my name, great name from on high. With all the details, all the details, you guys, we only just went through a, a few. We could sit here for 10 hours searching all the details of this event, and you'll find them here. I encourage you when you when when you when you get a code program and you this is going to be the one of the first ones I want you to search right here. And look for yourself. And you're going to embark on a journey that's going to blow your mind. The, the amount of detail you can find in such a narrow place. All about one subject matter, the crucifixion of Yeshua, all the people involved, Caiaphas, <laughs> Pilate, Rome. All of it's there. And for each term that you find, the statistical data changes to become even more astronomically impossible to be random occurrence. OK. <clears throat> this is just one code. And there's literally. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of codes. 
You know, I wanted to get the, the code program actually uploaded to a Google Drive so you guys could start downloading. But I, I was so buried uh, with work this week. Uh, talking with potential students and answering emails and working personal codes and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't get to it. Um, so the amount of information that's here to be found is, is you know, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot. And uh, you'll see that. You'll see where you're drawn into any one of these codes and you'll be working it. You'll have to budget that out between, you know, your time and your family and all that kind of stuff. And I would encourage you to be mindful of that. Um, when when you do start searching goes, that it can be time consuming, right? But again, I've said this before, you can't be in a better place. You know, you, you could either be at a bar or in a club or something like that, wasting hours, but being in the word, searching codes for hours on end, I can't think of a better place <clears throat> because it will enrich your life and you will start to see things that you never saw before. Verses you never thought it were even there. You thought you'd read the Bible, right? And maybe you have. <laughs> you just don't remember. But you're going to see these things over and over again. Trust me, for every code that you see, you're going to see verses and chapters that come around those cylinders. Repetition is uh, a big thing. And it, it actually helped me remember and retain a lot of Hebrew just by repetition seeing things over and over again and going to reference it and looking at, you know, different resources that I had. And, and little by little, I learned. All right. So the unique, unique thing here for each one of you is, is, you know, somebody there to teach you and kind of give you the skill set and some of the, the resources that I didn't have opportunity for. And so my expectation for each one of you is you guys are going to do even greater you guys are going to find amazing things, and I'm excited for you about that. And uh, I think um, it'll be uh, good for this field because um, <clears throat> even though some of the, the – when this first came out, you know, with Michael Drawson's book and his come away, um, it, it left a bad taste in the mouth of Christians, and they just, mm, you know, didn't want to talk about aliens and spacecraft and – you know, giving us a way to predict the future and all that kind of stuff. And just, it didn't do the, the field good. And so what we see is a lot of people walked away, especially Christians walked away. However, here's my thought on that. I don't think it was for the, for the Christians in the first place. I think it was for the remnant. And, and that's where I am on that. Um, because this is not for everybody. Not everybody's going to, you know, a lot of people are going to just laugh at this and think it's just silly. Um, and miss out on some amazing revelation that comes from this. Um, I believe the Bible interprets itself. And I believe that everybody's encoded. Everything that was, is, and will be is there. And for me, that proves to me that this Bible, this word, is from the creator. And it's not just from man. Even though he used man to construct some of it, um, it was divinely inspired. And so we can't say that about, about any other book. And I don't care what they say about Moby Dick. You guys will get an opportunity to search Moby Dick to your heart's content. And you will see you don't find codes like this in Moby Dick. Uh, it just doesn't happen. It, it's only in the Bible. So um, that's just, uh, just one other t way we can see codes. The Bible confirming itself. We've talked about the ephod and how we can use the codes to get a word from the father and confirm something. Um, and so that's what I got for you to get today. You guys, uh, <laughs> you guys have any questions? I do this all unscripted by the way, which is um, not an easy task. <laughs> With every class I go into, and there's a little bit of anxiety right before class because I'm like so unscripted. Father, give me the words to say. What am I supposed to say today? How am I supposed to deliver this? I got a basic concept, but um, the words are just not there when I start this. So um, every time we get to the end of these kind of things, I'm just fascinated at what has transpired. And so anyway, I'm just glad you guys are here and you're learning.
Yes, absolutely, Michelle. We can do that. Yeah. Um, and again, again, like I said, this week has been just hugely um, just busy. Yeah, and I couldn't get a, get around to getting the programs uploaded to a Google Drive so we could start passing that out. But uh, I will make a point to work on that this week, you guys, and try to get us to a point where uh, that's going to be a tedious thing. We're going to be meeting in, in Zoom like this, and one by one, we're going to work on getting everybody downloaded, all the kinks moved out of whatever happened, because each one of you have different issues different machines that we're working with and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to work through all of that. And once we do that, we'll progress from there. All right. Is everybody with me? So that's coming up. All right. I think you guys will be to the point where you could, you could do this. And we haven't even talked about code finder yet. We've just been talking about Torosol. So it's going to be a little bit of a climb for you guys to learn two programs at once, but I think you can do it. Uh, we'll we'll take our time. You know, we can meet more than once, actually. Right now, we're only meeting once a week. But I think once when everybody gets a code program and, you know, we can start meeting as a group and start, um, you know, experimenting, looking for personal codes and, you know, getting familiar with your code program and, and learning it. Right. And so we'll, we'll make sure that we have time outside of class where we can meet and uh, you guys can, um, you know, take the training wheels off, like I said before, and and hit the ground running. Uh, I think you're going to be blessed. I think you're going to be amazed at what Yah reveals to you. And so I want to be there and be a part of that and encourage you and, um, you know, lift you up when you need help. Because uh, here's the thing. Um, when we give the code program, there may be a couple of you that just, decide to take off on the course. And what you're going to find is you're going to have issues. You're going to have questions you can't answer. And you're not going to have community. Okay. So I want you to resist that urge and stick with us. I'm making a commitment to you guys. That if you stick with me for a year, I'll get you to a point where you can do this and be confident in what you do. Okay. But you can't get to that point. If you, if you get a code program and you bolt and you go, right, you're going to, you're going to have a hard time, right? So stay a part of the group, stay with the learning, stay with a group where, where when questions do arise and you want to ask, you know, the issues come up and this happened, that happened. You got a, a group to fall back on, a community to fall back on. And I want to see each one of you progress together. Okay. So um, just keep that in mind. I've had that happen to me before where, People sign up for the class and they only wanted the code program and they didn't care about the Hebrew and we'll figure it out on our own. Right. It didn't exactly turn out well for them. And um, I don't have any hard feelings, but for you guys, my goal for each one of you is to progress and to progress in a place where you are proficient and competent in, in searching codes. And I'm, and I make a commitment to get you there. Okay. In a year. All right. So stay with me. All right. It, it, if you, if you guys don't have any more questions or anything you want to talk about today, and, and again, at any time, you can message me on Discord or on the phone or, or whatever, and uh, we can engage at, at anything, okay? So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to pray us out, and uh, we'll see you guys at next Friday at the same time with, a, with another lesson, more vocabulary words, more code methodology, okay? Abi Hu, I'm so thankful, Father, for each and every student you brought me here, that you've given me the, the privilege and the honor to teach these things to, Father. I lift them up to you and ask you to keep them protected, that you would walk with them every day, that you would reveal yourself in a mighty way in your word and in their daily life, Father, that you would help them to see you in everything. Father, I pray for them and their family. I pray that you would um, bring them back at the appointed time and that they would continue this walk with us here, Father. Um, we lift them up to you. I ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, you guys. Great class. Thank you, each one of you, for being here with me today. And uh, we will see you next week. And we'll continue. Thank you, our Jonathan. Study. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank right. you, and everyone here. I love you guys. 
I'm praying for you, and uh, we'll see you in the next class, all right? Shalom to you.